this opportunity to welcome everyone here tonight. And it's an honor to chair this event, to celebrate the commemoration, the life of James Connolly. It's also an honor to stand here at this monument, which is erected by the Republican Socialist people of Derry, and all those independent Republicans who helped get the money raised to pay for it. Thank you again for that. I'd like to ask the Irish um, Republican Socialist Movement to read the first wreath. give their lives in pursuit of an Irish freedom. Thank you very much. I'd like to ask Jude from the James Connolly Cultural Youth Group to read uh, some of Connolly's writings. This is a reading from James Connolly from 19, 1897, which is still prevailing today. An Irish Republic would then be the natural desperate. Des Victory of popular power, the weapon of popular emancipation, the only power which would show in the full light of day all these class antagonisms and lines of economic dem dem demarcation, now obscured by the mass of various patronism, and that there is not a trace of chauvinism. We desire to pres preserve with the English people the same political relations as with the people of France or Germany or any of or of any other country, the greatest possible friendship, but also the strictest independence, rowers but not bedfellows, thus inspired by an already ideal, conducted by reason, not by tradition. Following a different course, the Socialist Republican Party of Ireland arrives at the same conclusion as the most irking irreconcilable nationalist, the government, governmental power of England over us must be destroyed. The bonds which bind us to, to her must be broken. Having learned from history that all various movements end in compromise, that the Borges revolutionists of today become the conservatives of tomorrow, the Irish socialists refuse to deny or to lose their identity with those who only half understand the problem of liberty. They seek only the alliance and the friendship of those hearts who, loving liberty for its own sake and not afraid to follow the banner when it is uplifted by the hands of the working class who most need, it, need of it. Their friends are those who would not hesitate to follow the, that standard of liberty to consecrate their lives and its service even should it lead to the terrible arbitration of the sword. Thank you, Jude. I'm going to ask our Warren Robson to read the main oration. Warren, please.
James Connolly stands out as a leader among the Irish working class. He was able to put his ideas to the people at every opportunity. He is are as relevant today as they were when he articulated them over 100 years ago. Connolly influenced people with his ideas and now 150 years after his birth, young people across Ireland are learning about radical left-wing politics from, reading, from his readings and writings. We are proud to be associated with Connolly. We aim to give Connolly a better under, give young people a better understanding of the political ideas and history of James Connolly. We are proud to stand here tonight, 150 years after his birth, so that we can remember a great Irish hero. Connolly's writings and political philosophy make him stand out as unique in that he was motivated by serving his class, the working class. He lived during a time of great injustice and inequality. He sided with the poor and openly talked about revolutionary action. He travelled the world spreading that revolutionary message. He organised and agitated and used each and every opportunity in order to raise awareness of the issues facing the people at a time when ordinary people were being exploited for war and profit. Ireland was part of the British Empire and Connolly wanted a free Ireland where, pe where the people could decide their own destiny. He knew it wasn't just for one country to occupy another through the force of arms and he sensed the desire for Irish freedom among Irish people. He raised awareness through his writings and he helped establish the Irish Socialist Republican Party and the Irish Citizen Army so that the people would have organisations that would fight for their right to freedom. He created the conditions for Easter Rising and argued that all the groups strike against the British Empire earlier than what had been planned. He wanted to see a free Ireland and he knew that Britain was under intense pressure as they were fighting in Europe so decided to strike whilst they were in difficulty. He militarily led the Easter Rising and for this he was executed whilst tied to a chair. This was the biggest mistake the British could have made. The murder of the Rising leaders created a wave of support for the Republican aims and this finally led to British being forced from 26 of our counties. He fought for socialism. He wanted a better future for all the people. He knew that people working with the one aim could, could make changes for all in society. His ideas inspire us all today and this is reflected in the work that we do. He has shown the way by organising and educating. The IRSP will carry on this work, the modern day inheritors of Connolly's political lineage. James Connolly's daughter, Nora Connolly O'Brien, came to the city in 1977 and officially opened James Connolly House in Chamberlain Street, the IRSP headquarters in the city. She endorsed Seamus Coslow as the one who most represented her father's political ideas. Across Ireland there are streets, hospitals, schools and even train stations named in honour of James Connolly. But the most important aspect of honouring Connolly is missing. The political philosophy is missing from the body politic. We must, if we are truly to honour James Connolly, build that viable political alternative. The IRSP must be to the forefront of this effort. We must do all we can to promote Connolly's ideas. Connolly is part of our history, but he's also very much part of our future. The message of uniting the class and national struggles was unique and timely, and will ultimately win out. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Before we, we bring proceedings to an end, I would like to ask Dylan and Charlie from the James Connolly Memorial Foot Band to play a mass anthem.
Thank you very much for coming out tonight and just remind you that I was spearheading a debate on Ireland out of, or England out of Ireland tomorrow night at the Tower Hotel, 7 o'clock, all welcome.